So glad that all of you are here this morning as we observe Labor Day. For many, that means recreate, or like we're doing at my house, get some work done. For all of us, it feels like a last hurrah of summer. But we are reminded over and over again throughout this service that this is a time for us to be mindful of workers among us. Our faith calls us to be a part of the creation of just working environments. We have the labor movement to thank for this long weekend. We even have the labor movement to thank for every weekend. We're grateful that labor has long advocated for children so that they can go to school and not get forced into work, although we must be vigilant as there are states in our nation today that are loosening those protections around our children. In Arkansas, a child can work without a permit, without showing any age verification, for up to six days and 48 hours a week. A child. And they aren't the only state that is trying to roll back these protections. This is why it is so important for people of faith to speak and work for economic justice, for safety, health, well-being, and fair living wages. It's pervasive throughout our biblical text. And we have a moral and ethical obligation to say something and to listen. So this morning, we have the privilege of hearing um, from several people, but first I want to introduce you to a leader in an organization that we've already spoken about. It is near and dear to my heart, clergy and lady, United for Economic Justice. There are several of us who are active clergy and lay people in our own congregation here. Uh, what Clue does is help to connect people of faith with workers in our community. And we like to walk with workers, and sometimes that calls for us to, to pray alongside workers, to sit and to listen. On occasion, we've been known to shout a bit. Sometimes we sit down. We sit down with management or owners and help to be at the table, to provide a space that we can create that's safe for everybody. So joining us this morning is my very good friend, Adam Overton, and he is joined by workers from Kingspan, a company right here in Orange County that works on light and ventilation system, systems, but has several documented incidents of environmental pollution, which is incredibly important to us, and we're worried about your health and safety. We're a green faith church, and so we see a mandate to speak out for the environment, and as an economic justice congregation, we want to speak out for human rights. And finally, if you enjoy evening entertainment or entertainment at all at your home, you've probably noticed that the late night shows are on hiatus and your favorite television shows won't be back next season because of the writers and now actors strike. And we are fortunate to have with us Laura Shapiro, who has been a WGA member for over two decades. She's a writer, an independent producer, and a consultant on a number of projects with Universal Studios, HBO Max, Lionsgate, 20th Century, and more, working with well-known filmmakers and producing benefit concerts. And her most recent credit is a story editor on Max with Steven Soderbergh in a limited series called Full Circle. It's a cautionary tale about morality and responsibility disguised as a thriller. So you can tell this is going to be an interesting conversation, and we're going to lead it. Uh, we'll just kind of go in that order, and Reverend Terry LePage will wrap us up with some love as we lead into communion. So Adam, welcome. Right. Good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom alaikum. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, practicing my Yiddish wherever I can. Um, my name is Adam Overton. I'm with Clue. I'm an organizer, faith rooted organizer. And we've we've met before. You may not recognize me, but my hipster beard decided to go on strike about three weeks ago. 
and um, I don't think it's going to be coming back to work. But first of all, yeah, first of all, just want to thank Talia. We usually come here just about every uh, every Labor Day, and so every time we're here, we're gift like this is uh, your music is one of the main things. Like I'm really, really looking forward to. And so, um, yeah, I just really appreciate you and, and your passion and all the contributions your family has made to the, to the labor community in the fight for real working jobs. So I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over in a minute, but I really appreciated um, uh, what Deacon Christine brought up today about the Sabbath. And I'll just give you a little tidbit before I hand it off that in, in Hebrew, the, the Hebrew word for Shabbat or Sabbath is Shin Beit Tov. The root word for, well, the word for strike is Shevita, and the root word for that is Shin Beit Tov, the same thing. Every week of the year, Jews go on strike. <laughs> Seriously, it is the most sacred day of the year every week. And what folks are engaged in right now is a sacred fight for justice, for dignity, to be able to last and live like trees to, to, through their entire um, existence. And so I'm going to hand it over. Well, first I'm going to say, just so you know, we're not talking about it today, but Anaheim Hilton and Anaheim Sheraton workers went on strike this morning at 3 a.m. And they're going to be on strike all week. So any chance you can go over to Disney and stop by and honk or drop off some water or go pick it, please do. They'll be here. They'll be out 3 a.m. to 10 p.m. All, all day starting today through this week. But now I want to hand it over to my friends, the Kingspan workers, uh, Raimundo and uh, uh, Robert, to talk, tell you about something that's been happening for two years, and that's still happening 15 minutes away from us in Santa Ana at the Kingspan factory. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Robert Torres, and I'm a former worker that experienced the greatness of having a union. And after two years of being a, a union member, I became an organizer. And I think uh, the community needs us out there. We need to let uh, our friends, our family, that having the union is the best because our communities you know, have been shut down and they're afraid to speak. I dream that everybody in the world will have access to have a, not only a union, but also a voice to speak up with something's not right. Uh, that's why uh, being here today with, with you all, I'm very proud of the next person, Raimundo. He's a Kingspan worker, and he has been uh, very active you know, in every way. You know, and he is a new generation of organizers and communities, allies in, in Orange County. So I'm going to pass it on to him so he can explain a little bit of what's going on, you know, uh, after two years of being organizing. Thank you. Um, hi, good morning, everybody. Soy trabajador de Kinspaya por 10 años. I'm a, a Kingspan worker for about 10 years. Uh, la razón de que estamos organizando por parte de la union. The reason that we're organizing the union. Es porque um, eh, debido al este al a la seguridad que está ocurriendo dentro de la compañía. It's it's due to the uh, health and safety issues inside the company. Uh, por las contaminaciones que está viendo dentro de la compañía por parte de la soldadura que está este mucho smog. For all the contamination that the, uh, the welding department creates inside the company. Uh, también la están pintando, dijeron que iban a poner unos extractores para la, la pintura, estamos este respirando mucha contaminación. And also do the, the uh, uh, in there's a painting department without uh, uh, um, paint booth. There's no extraction that sucks all those particles of the paint. Uh, hasta ahorita no hemos tenido ninguna respuesta sobre esos extractores. As of right now, we haven't heard anything about from the company uh, about having those extractors. Es por eso la razón que queremos que este, la unión nos represente, ¿verdad? That's why we're unionizing. That's why we're, we're doing the union. 
porque no, somos, no estamos siendo escuchados todo lo que estamos pidiendo a la compañía por nuestra salud. Because we're not being heard by the company for all the issues about the, the safety. Y también estamos pidiendo respeto. We are also um, asking respect inside the, inside the, the, the workshop. Y un trato justo también. And a fair treatment. Eh, y queremos, por eso estamos, la razón que estamos aquí. One of the reasons that we're here today. Uh, queremos invitarlos para octubre 20. We would like to invite you all for October 20th. Uh, y queremos dar gracias también a, este, a Adam porque él es el del club que nos ha estado apoyando en esta campaña. We also want to say thank you to Adam because he's been very supportive with us. Um, y thank you. Um, just one bit. Uh, we do want to, you know, talk to you about a little bit what's going on on the twentieth. We having a huge march, and we need your support. The Kingspan workers need your support, and hopefully, we can see you all there. We have a signing sheet, and, and if you're interested, please sign and let us know if you're gonna if you could be with us on uh, on that day. Thank you very much. And please join Clue. We've got some uh, clipboards. Please sign up. Um, please join us on the picket lines in Anaheim all this week. And again, October 20th, we're going to be getting, uh, a t try to get a huge component, a uh, contingent of faith community out there to stand with folks, uh, the incredible folks. And I also just want to mention, too, one thing that's really amazing about these folks is that that this movement is growing and growing and growing. And it's because of people like Robert, who was a worker and then became organized, got organized and then became a union organizer. Then he came along and organized uh, Raimundo. And now Raimundo and Robert have been going to Modesto to organize other workers at other Kingspan factories. That's exactly how it works. It's just you get organized and then you organize the next person they organize the next. So anyways, we're so glad now to have uh, um, the wonderful Lauren Shapiro with us from Hollywood. Good morning. On this Labor Day weekend, the WGA strike is in its fourth month and SAG-AFTRA is about a, a one and a half months in. I'm not going to bore you with contract details. We get a lot of press, unlike our brothers and sisters in other unions. And uh, so if you are looking for a clear and concise assessment of the state of our negotiations, I refer you to Pulitzer Prize winning columnist, Mary McNamara's most recent column in the Los Angeles Times entitled, Hollywood Studios Have Lost the Strikes, Now It's Time to Surrender. Too long, didn't read, that's, that's the message. I could go into the nitty gritty of contract points or the dangerous yet amusing corporate attempts at damage control, which all backfired. But this is a progressive church, so I thought I'd talk instead about late stage capitalism and compassion. Hollywood has always been a brutal business. The very real extremes of the Harvey Weinsteins of the world aside, I mean brutal in the day-to-day -day interactions that make up a life. But before the invasion of the Silicon Valley corporate raiders, everyone, even the highest level executives, knew we were making or reflecting culture, if not art, and usually gave that responsibility the reverence it deserves, even Harvey. Actually, especially, especially Harvey, which is profoundly sad and reminds us that evil is not, unfortunately, antithetical to art or even progressive politics. But that was in the before times. Before the Silicon Valley corporate disruptors swooped in, upending the already problematic state of workers' rights in the industry. The ideology of Silicon Valley can be explained most simply by their adoration of Ayn Rand's narcissistic philosophy of collectivism, which is the antithesis of compassion and art. Compassion and art are directly linked, especially in the performing arts. 
Even the most commercial, derivative, mindless dreck has to give the actors something to play, which means something to feel. Compassion. This is why AI art is an abomination. It's the death of culture moving us further from the soul connection, which is what makes us come back again and again to the shows and films we love. The strike isn't only about writers and actors. It's about the rapacious, unrelenting nexus of Silicon Valley's disruption and decimation of any business. Taking it apart and selling the scraps for Wall Street's stock price, turning everyone into frightened gig workers so financially insecure and hungry will take the pittance they offer too weak and demoralized to fight back, a fever dream of late stage capitalism. Heading into the apocalypse of climate disaster where only the uber wealthy, Silicon Valley and Wall Street again, will have anything resembling a decent life. We are fighting back, not just WGA and SAG-AFTRA, everyone. Teamsters and Starbucks workers and airline pilots and hotel workers. This is human, a human rights action as much as it is a strike. The essence of human rights activism is spiritual. Again, it all comes down to compassion. The moment, this became, the moment this became a worldwide human rights action was when, in an obviously planted PR piece in the entertainment trades, the um, corporations said their strategy was to stonewall us long enough to make us homeless. Compassion again, or lack thereof. This is now a worldwide labor, labor movement. All workers in solidarity. They really screwed up one of the epic most epic failures in human history, actually. They pushed 11,600 writers into the streets and used their imperfect and but still, in, and we used their imperfect but still effective invention, social media, to communicate directly with other humans. And a worldwide labor movement was born. We are seeing unions rise up everywhere, all over the world. We are seeing unions formed and workers taking action. I will conclude with a note to our bosses who usually give them to us. If you tell a group of highly articulate workers in the business of telling stories and inspiring emotion that you intend to violate their human rights, you may indeed end up with a worldwide workers' revolution. In the early 20th century, the international workers of the world, the Wobblies, tried to organize across professions and borders for the basic human rights of workers everywhere. In a way, the technology created by the very companies oppressing us has ironically brought the dreams of the Wobblies closer than ever. So on this Labor Day weekend, it is truly fitting that I end with a slightly altered version of Alfred Hayes' famous poem. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me. Says I, but Joe, you're a century dead. I never died, said he, says he. Thank you. Have a wonderful Labor Day. Terry LePage. Uh, minor supporter in this amazing cast of characters. I show up with my clergy collar on and make the point that this is sacred work that these folks are doing, that they are on the side of right. And when you're dealing with low-wage workers who are scared to death of their bosses, that is important you could join me. Let, let's just do a quick check here. Who has belonged to a union? Raise your hand. Okay. Who has been a union rep or a union organizer? Okay. A couple of you. All right. And who has been to a clue meeting? Yeah. I, sometimes there's like six of us in the same meeting. It's awesome. And who has been to a clue action? All right. So um, if you think you might sometime want to go to a clue action, 
let me know, grab me on the patio. It's the kind of thing, Adam works it so nicely where it's, you know, are you free that day? <laughs> and if I am, great, and if I'm not, great. And when I do, though, it always really touches my soul. It's soul work, what we do. And it has really changed me, just that simple supporting role. You don't need a clergy caller to, to do it. You know, I'm from a church that cares about you and what you're doing. And we are way over time. So. <laughs> So it is.